This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and today in After Effects we're going to be creating an array out of manual shapes that are not generated by particles, but rather have their own individual properties that you can go in and keyframe later. So it's not that difficult, and after a few expressions and a few short steps, we'll uh, have everything we're looking for. So let's open up After Effects and get into it. So the first thing you want to do is create a new composition. We're going to make HDTV 1080 24 frames a second. Go ahead and hit all right for that. You've got a comp, and the first thing we want to do is just create a new solid. Call this the uh, background. That's good enough. And just set it to be white or light or something like that, just so we can see what we're doing. Now we're going to create a new shape layer. And this shape layer is basically going to be one of those particle things. We used a bunch of individual symbols in our example that you saw in the intro, but for our purposes here, it can be anything. And we're just going to make a polystar. And in that polystar, we're going to make sure it is set to polygon. We're going to give it an outer radius of 100. That's fine. Nice, small shape. So then we're just going to add a fill to this. And, you know, in this fill, it's just going to be, you know, hue of 200, saturation of 50, and, you know, darkness of 25. And that's it. So this will be our sprite. So let's just call that what it is. And we can duplicate it and we can create a whole bunch of other ones as well. So let's say we want one that is a blue pentagon and we want one that is going to be, maybe it's going to be a red triangle. So we can hit UU, bring up its its properties here, call up the polystar, and then we change it. We have a red triangle, right? And then we can duplicate this again and we can have ourselves perhaps a, a yellow, maybe a yellow square, you know? just a whole bunch of things like that and it doesn't really matter what they are because the core of this has nothing to do with these individual shapes so I'm just gonna make three individual distinct things so you can kinda of see what we're doing and then we'll take it from there so the first thing you have to do is take these things and make them three-dimensional and we're gonna need a new null object to serve as a control and an anchor for these so it'll have to be 3d as well take those sprites you've created and parent them to the null object. And this null object is going to be driving all of the rotation. So let's set that up right now and just hold down Alt, click on the stopwatch of the orientation here, and type in wiggle, and then a couple of brackets. And within those brackets, we're going to do something like 0.1 seconds, and I want you to rotate a whole 360 degrees in that time, which has this thing spinning and undulating around just willy nilly. Perhaps 360 is a bit excessive, it just needs to be 180, so it'll change 100% of the way around at least once, and it'll do that 0.1 times a second. So we have these things now spinning and twirling about, which is great, but we don't want them all stuck there. So on that null object, I want you to apply a slider control, and what a slider control is, is just a control over a numeric value that can go from anything to anything. It's just a placeholder. And what we'll do here is in these sprites, call up their position, and we're going to give them an expression. That expression is going to be wiggle, and it's going to wiggle no times a second, so never change this value. And it's going to wiggle the amount of this thing's slider control. So just go ahead, select the null object, hit E, it'll bring up the slider control. And then you take the wiggle, and on that second part after the comma, you want to pick whip to that slider, that is all. So what that means is, as I increase the slider value, that this object starts to move away from the core of the piece. Just organize my windows here a bit better. So if we take this position here, we copy it and we paste it onto these other objects, you can see that it's given them all a random assignment far away from this, up to a maximum of a thousand units, because that's what we've put in. So we're going to keyframe their explosion out from this by just starting at, say, 20 frames. The slider should start at zero. And then after about 10 frames, the slider should be at 500 is an appropriate number. So keyframing them, pushing away from this null object. Seems to be working so far so good. The other thing we want to do is to map their scale to be relative to this null object as well. So their scale, we're going to give an expression to them. And basically what it'll be is linking this to this slider. 
Now when you use the pick whip, it creates these temp variables in here, which is very gracious of it. So we have temp equals, and then this slider, and then because it is a three-part array, it is temp, temp, temp. What I'd like to do instead is say x equals this thing, and then temp is going to equal linear, and then in brackets, the x, which is that slider, and now we're going to say from 0 to 500 will be remapped to the new numbers 0 to 25. It's going to give me an error because I forgot a semicolon. Make sure you always end your variables with semicolons. And this means that as the slider comes up, this little triangle here is growing to be up to 25. Now, depending on what you're doing, you might need to scale that up to, say, 50 or who knows what. But now we can take this scale and apply it to these other shapes. So now it starts off with nothing, and then it pops into existence. We're going to take these keyframes, easy ease them. Let's go in here real close, and we're going to adjust this curve to have 100% influence on its back handle, just so it has a different type of motion as it comes on. And now we just need to take these layers and we need to orient them to always face the camera. So create a new camera and we're going to go with a 24 millimeter preset. That's acceptable. And keep in mind, since we're using the wiggle expressions to drive everything, every new layer you create will alter the state of the layers just because they're using random seeds that are based on the index values. So whenever the index value of the layer changes, it's going to change the layers. So grab these layers. And then we go layer, transform, auto orient, and we say orient towards camera. That means they will always appear flat facing oriented towards the camera. No matter where they go, they're always going to be pointing there, which is perfect when visualizing data or something that you want to just be kind of undulating out in space but with no discernible 3D characteristics. It is good for those abstract data points. Now, we want to take those. And since everything has been set up, we can just duplicate them a bunch of times and create more and more and more and more different of these things and just create a whole bunch of them. So when it comes out, everything pops out. And as you can see, they undulate around in a very interesting array. Now, if you want to start editing parts of these, say at some point you want to set keyframes for maybe Sprite 24 here, call up its position and scale and we'll just look into how we can edit these so that you are able to actually change them. So on this first one, we have a wiggle that's being applied to it, but wiggles are applied to things that have keyframes already. So if you don't like its position, you can just grab its keyframes and start moving it around. But again, like I said, if you add more layers, then that's gonna get weird. So you can keyframe this manually to be wherever you would like. But just keep in mind that as you move it off of its zero, you're moving it further away from that origin. So if you're going to keyframe it, make sure the keyframes start from 0, 0, or weird things will happen. Now, if you want to alter its scale, perhaps you want to highlight one of these data points. Instead of having its end result be temp, 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 have it be value plus temp, 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 meaning whatever value it is originally, just add these temp values to it. Now, when you click out, that makes it way too big but set these down to zero and you're back where you should be. So now if I want to highlight this, I just set a keyframe on the scale, move ahead a bit and then scale it up. And then I'm able to highlight and isolate any points I want that are of interest. So this could grow and then you have letters come out from it and all that kind of thing. And if you want things to be stuck to it, all you have to do is create a new thing, perhaps text, I'll create some of that. And then you just parent this to that sprite. So take the text, make it 3D, parent it there, call up its position and rotation, set position to be zero, orientation to be zero, and you're going to want to set this to layer, transform, auto orient, and then also towards the camera. And that way, as it's moving around attached to this thing, it is also oriented directly to the camera. So you can see that there are lots of things you can do to now individually alter these pieces. 
You may also want to play around with the colors. You might want to mess around with the camera here like I did to give it a really intense depth of field. So set the f-stop down to 1, blur level up to 400%, and then things get really blurry really fast. Or you can just scale up the depth and size of your comp and all that. But this has been how to create a manual array that behaves kind of like particles, but you have a lot more fine control with it and no extra plugins are required. So I'm Evan Abrams. Hopefully this has been a helpful tutorial for you. Stop by premiumbeat.com and check out our blog for all sorts of tips and tricks and tutorials in After Effects and other applications. And of course, come to premiumbeat.com for all of your royalty-free sound effects and music needs. There's a lot of great stuff there and you should definitely check it out and you'll find more tutorials from me there. So that's cool too. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at ECAbrams, if you'd like. Thanks again for watching, and have a nice day.